Hello everyone, welcome to another exciting Minecraft tutorial. I am Tykin, and today I'm going to blow your mind with a little bit of redstone science. To start with, a few of you have been having problems with PlayStation 3 and Xbox editions uh, for a few reasons. First of all, redstone is slightly different on those platforms for some reason, as well as no hoppers and... Um, comparators and all this fancy stuff that makes a flip-flop right here. So I'm going to be showing you guys an update on how to fix that as I had promised. I'm also going to be simplifying this and kind of explaining it how it works better and I'm also going to show a slight update on how to make this slightly more compact. Um, not too much of a change but it does help as well as making it simpler for redstone noobs. Okay, first of all um, as you guys remember, this is a very important feature right here. I believe it's called a sequencer. I don't know the exact name, but I'm going to make sure you guys don't get this confused because this is pretty much the brain of the machine. Okay, first of all, this is how it starts off. You have the six blocks. The six, anything in marble or quartz, I suppose, is a central block, meaning it has to be there or these things won't work. Okay, so you have these six guys right here. Um, each one has a repeater, uh, kind of in a clockwise rotation, I believe. Yeah, clockwise. So anyway, all these repeaters circle around. Um, not entirely, but we'll get to that. Okay, starting from here, this is the input block, meaning this entire machine starts here. Anything, any redstone signal you put here will make this machine work, or not work, for lack thereof. Okay, uh, then we're going to have repeaters. Each of the outer repeaters are going to have a single tick. And by outer ones, I mostly mean these four. Um, except for this one. For some reason, the machine will not work, or at least as far as I've tested it, not work or work well, unless this one has two ticks. So one tick, two ticks, and then these two have one ticks. Uh, the middle ones all face towards your machine. Uh, none of these are going to be following the clockwise motion except maybe this one. So all of these are going to be pointing to the one in front of it. Um, none of these are going to have ticks, as this little sign suggests. Zero. Zero ticks. Uh, and these just the signs just point in which way it goes. Okay. Now, if you're an Xbox or PlayStation 3 uh, player, I actually rented the game specifically just so I could test this out. And the machine worked perfectly fine, except for some reason it wouldn't work unless I had an extra tick right there. Which, uh, let's go ahead and test this out. As I tested it, the machine works perfectly fine, even in standard Minecraft edition, even with the additional tick. So feel free to add that, just for safety precautions for whatever reason. And again, if you play the Xbox or PlayStation version, you need that tick or this machine simply won't work. I think this will pull back before those pull down, which is kind of a problem. So, um, on top of that, uh, just forward explaining, uh, as you guys may have known, as I explained in the previous tutorials, uh, what this machine is meant to do is have all these go off in a sequence. Essentially on, 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 and then when it turns off, it turns it off in the opposite order. So off, off, off. Um, essentially, this makes the pistons do what they need to do properly without getting too technical. Um, these are all the essential blocks and placements. I've already done a tutorial on how to build this, although it should be fairly simple on just how I've placed these, or just the angle and the notes of the quartz being there. Also, you cannot have a block right here whatsoever, because uh, that redstone will make this one go off. So if you guys are having problems, it could be that you don't have one of the essential blocks there, you have a block that shouldn't be there, which this one is the only one that should be in the way, or one of these doesn't have its proper calibration. Um, again, this is the only one that should have two, all the back and front ones should have one, and then the middle ones should have zero and all be facing towards the machine. Uh, I keep repeating that because these are very important and I've messed them up myself uh, previously. I haven't messed those up in a while just because it's become a habit for me, but for newer people, definitely important. Uh, these redstone torches are important because they need to be on while that one needs to be off. Um, I tried switching it the other way around before, and for some reason, the timing just is completely off. So, yes, those torches are pretty important as well. Um, 
Okay, now to get onto things that uh, are slightly new, we are going to be compacting this ever so slightly. Uh, first thing we're going to be doing though is let's go ahead and add a repeater right here because I had one over there, but it's just to make sure the signal goes all the way through. Probably won't need one, but to be safe, we're going to go ahead and essentially just ramp it up like stairs right here. And then just circle it around and you can just place it on top of there. And then right there. Uh, the reason these obsidian blocks are right there is if the machine ever messes up, it won't push the piston away. So shouldn't have to worry about that. And then you just have the stairs come down. It essentially should look the same on both sides, and this does work. I did test it. So let's go ahead. As it stands, though, the lava needs to be flowing right now. Otherwise, it's going to be flowing while it's open. I think those accidentally dispensed those. Let's go ahead and put those back in. I don't know why it would have dispensed them. Wait. That's a dropper, that's why. Whoops. My mistake. Um, there we go. That would explain why those or dropped, I suppose, instead of dispensed. These things are just being all kinds of difficult right now. Okay. Let's go ahead and just drop these back in. Wait a minute. Yeah, dispenser. That's a dropper for a sec. All right. Let's do this one more time. Dispenses the lava. Okay. Current mode is hidden. You press the button. Crushes the lava, sucks it back up, opens the staircase. That did not go through for some reason. I think we'll have to worry about that later. But for now, the machine should work fine. Um, there is one more fix, unfortunately, that is required for the PlayStation 3 and Xbox version. Is that you can't have this fancy little compact T-flip-flop because of reasons. Um, main reason is because they don't have those machines and items and that version. So we're going to make an old school classical version of a T flip flop. And that would be just doing this. Uh, this is going to kind of stick out a bit. Uh, you guys can fix it personally if you feel like it. Um, but as it stands, it's going to be the same shape either way. Okay. And remember, these blocks are important. So these two, this one. Um, actually, you can use just regular pistons if you want to save some slime. I'm not sure if it changes the mechanics. Last I checked, it didn't, but things may have changed. I always use regular pistons just for cost purposes. Torches on either side. Redstone on top. Okay, what's going to happen is you're going to place, place a single redstone dust here. So when it flips to this side, it's going to push the redstone signal to this block, which will activate that and activate the machine. This is very old school. I wouldn't say very old school, but it's the last most modern design for the teep flip flop before the dropper one, the hopper dropper comparator thing uh, became big. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to hook this machine up uh, to that. There is another way to do this with a lever, but honestly buttons are just better in every single way for this machine possible. So you're gonna want a T flip flop. Otherwise, you're taking up the same amount of space. You're getting a crappier job. A T flip flop and a button is honestly going to be the best possible thing you can do. So anyway, uh, essentially, you don't want the redstone to touch the pistons or the torches besides the top part. You wanna definitely connect it to the top part, but you don't want it to, to get anywhere and screw these up. So then what you're going to want to do is connect this to these because these gonna these are gonna have to go off every time uh, also for the lava to dispense and pull back in so you press the button that is messing up I think it may be because of this I don't think the PC version is safe for that and let's go ahead and uh, fix this real quick Okay, 
There we go. Okay, so as it stands, it's open. Now we close it up. Those close up, it dispenses, works perfectly fine, and I did check it, it does work perfectly fine in the PlayStation version. Let's go ahead and make sure that uh, stairs working now. Yeah, I think the reason is, for some reason this extra tick screws it up, but in the PlayStation and Xbox version it is essential, so sorry about that previous statement of it should be fine for PC, so don't, don't put that on PC. Um, console, yes, PC, no. Uh, the extra tech, I mean. And of course, the redstone is a little more compact, and which makes it a little bit easier to hide. Also, a lot less of a monstrosity. I apologize for my previous monstrosityness. Okay, um, that should be everything for this brief little tutorial. I probably made it much longer than it should be, but I try to make sure everyone understands this as as much as possible, even the most basic noob. And if you want to see actually step by step on how to build this thing, feel free to check out my previous tutorial. Except, you know, you can just do the redstone on the sides better, because that's pretty much the only thing I've changed. And um, remember, if you're confused about the ticks and everything, just feel free to double check on this video. Uh, one, two, one, one. Middles have zeros. And console, this one has one extra tick, which would mean it would be right there. So, other than that, you guys are pretty much set. Feel free to build one of these yourself. Of course, you know, if your friends know of my videos too, then it may not be so much of a secret entrance. But they still can't get in unless they either break it or find the secret button. So you have that going for you. And, of course, there's so many fun ways to hide the actual button. So, remember that. I might show you guys some extra tips later on how to actually hide your button. And uh, I'll see you guys next time.